Syosset Hospital's Center for Orthopedic Excellence presents Transition of Care, What to Expect When You Go Home. This slide presentation will provide you with the information necessary for a successful and safe recovery following your orthopedic surgery. This presentation will review some of the information contained in the Transition of Care booklet that will be given to you prior to discharge from the hospital. Please review the booklet while in the hospital so we can answer any questions or address any concerns you have prior to discharge. During this presentation, we'll be discussing how to manage postoperative pain, clot prevention, treatment of constipation, and protection of your stomach. We will also be discussing the personalized medication calendar, herbal supplements and drug interactions, preventing infection, and helpful tips to assist with your recovery. In the hospital, we use a pain management regimen called multimodal pain management. This means that you're given a combination of pain medications. Each of these medications works in a different way to reduce pain. Together, these medications work synergistically, meaning together they help relieve pain better than if each one was taken alone. Continuing multimodal pain management at home will provide you with better pain control and reduce the amount of narcotics you'll need to take. Multimodal pain management consists of three types of medications. Acetaminophen, known by the brand name of Tylenol, a medication from a class of drug called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, and a narcotic. Your treatment plan will be tailored to you based on your medical history and allergies to medications. If you have a medical condition which excludes you from taking any of these medications, this will be discussed with you prior to discharge. We recommend that you take acetaminophen 1,000 mg every 8 hours. You should not take acetaminophen from any other sources. Some over-the-counter and prescription medications contain acetaminophen combined with other medicines. If you're uncertain if a medication contains acetaminophen, ask your pharmacist. Taking too much acetaminophen can harm your liver. You should never take more than 3,000 mg of acetaminophen in a 24-hour period. Your pain management regimen will include a drug from a class called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs. Examples of medications in this class include Celecoxib, or Celebrex, Meloxicam, or Mobic, Ibuprofen, or Motrin and Advil, and Naproxen, or Aleve. You will be prescribed Celecoxib twice a day. If you are unable to take Celecoxib, you will be prescribed another medication from this class. Never take more than one medication in this class at the same time. If you have had hip replacement surgery, celecoxib is also being prescribed to prevent a complication called heterotopic ossification, which can occur following hip surgery. Heterotopic ossification is abnormal bone growth into the tissue and muscle surrounding the hip bone. Taking celecoxib will prevent this complication. However, you must continue the treatment for the entire 21 days. People who cannot take celecoxib because of an allergy, but can otherwise take anti-inflammatories, will be prescribed another NSAID. Never stop the medication to prevent heterotopic ossification before the entire 21 days of treatment is finished. If necessary, you may continue to take this medication for pain control after the 21 days. At your two-week office visit to the surgeon, you may request a refill for your NSAID medication if needed. You will be prescribed a narcotic on discharge. Narcotics are taken only as needed, meaning you only take them if you have breakthrough pain. You should only take the narcotics that are prescribed on discharge. We do not prescribe any narcotics with acetaminophen in them, such as Percocet, Vicodin, or Norco. This is because you're already taking acetaminophen around the clock, and we do not want you to take acetaminophen from other sources. While taking narcotics and acetaminophen, do not drink any alcohol. Drinking alcohol while taking acetaminophen can cause damage to your liver. You should not drive while taking narcotics. Narcotics can cause you to feel lightheaded, especially if you change position too quickly. It's advisable that you move slowly to give your body time to adjust. When getting out of bed, first move to a sitting position, wait for your body to adjust, and then stand up. As your pain decreases, your narcotic use will decrease. 
the narcotic should be the first medication that you stop using to manage postoperative pain. Then slowly stop taking doses of acetaminophen or the NSAID medication. Remove one dose at a time. So, if you're taking acetaminophen three times a day after surgery, slowly decrease to two times a day and then once a day. Do the same with the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. Remember, if you had hip replacement surgery and are taking an NSAID to prevent abnormal bone growth, you must finish the full 21 days of treatment. Joint replacement surgery itself increases the risk for blood clots to form. In addition, your activity level has decreased and you don't have the normal mechanisms where muscles are contracting to help stimulate blood flow. Blood clots that form in a major vein are called deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. If DVT breaks off and travels to the lung, it's called a pulmonary embolus, or PE. Preventing blood clots involves medication, mobility, and hydration. You should walk as much as possible. Follow the physical therapy plan that's been designed for you. When sitting, you should continue to do the ankle pumps that you learned in the hospital. Mobility will increase blood flow and prevent blood from pooling in the legs. Adequate hydration is also needed to prevent the formation of blood clots. Drink at least eight, eight-ounce glasses of beverages each day, unless instructed otherwise by your doctor. The medication prescribed to prevent a blood clot is customized to your surgery, medical history, and risk for developing a clot. Some of the treatment options are enteric-coated aspirin or apixaban, also known as Eliquis. The medication you're being prescribed, as well as the start and stop dates, will be discussed with you prior to discharge. You should never stop this medication early, as this could put you at risk for developing a blood clot. If you're having any issues finishing the medication prescribed, contact your surgeon's office immediately to discuss other treatment options. You'll be provided with a personalized medication calendar, which will have all of this information written for you. The medication prescribed to prevent blood clots can sometimes cause bleeding. You should report any of the following symptoms of bleeding to your surgeon immediately. Nosebleeds that happen often. Bleeding that is strong and hard to stop. Red, pink, or brown urine. Coughing up blood or blood clots. Vomiting blood or vomit that looks like coffee grounds. Red or black, tarry-looking stools. Headaches, feeling dizzy or weak. Pain, swelling, or new drainage at the site of the surgical wound. Since we're giving you medication to prevent a blood clot, you should be aware of the signs and symptoms of what a blood clot would feel like. If you note any of the following signs or symptoms of a blood clot in your leg, please contact your surgeon immediately. Increasing pain in your calf, a temperature greater than 100.4 degrees, an area of the leg that is warmer to the touch than the areas around it, a slight increase in warmth at the wound site is normal, tenderness or redness above or below your knee, increased swelling in your calf, ankle, and foot, tingling or numbness in an extremity, an extremity that is cold to touch. Rarely, a blood clot can travel to the lungs. During your postoperative recovery, if you note any of the following signs or symptoms of a blood clot in your lung, please go to the nearest emergency room immediately. These symptoms are the sudden onset of shortness of breath or increasing shortness of breath, the sudden onset of chest pain or localized chest pain with coughing, any coughing up of blood or blood-tinged sputum. Constipation is a common side effect of taking narcotics. You can manage this side effect by increasing your fluid intake to at least eight, eight ounce glasses of a non-caffeinated beverage each day, and by adding at least five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables to your diet. We also recommend that you use a stool softener such as Docusate, also known as Colace, 100 milligrams, three times a day while you're taking narcotics. Docusate is a medication that causes the stool to absorb moisture, so you must drink adequate fluids for it to be effective. Once you've stopped taking narcotics for pain, you should continue the docusate until your bowel movements return to normal. Constipation should be treated with a laxative as needed. 
There are many laxatives available over-the-counter, which are effective to relieve constipation caused by narcotics. Some of the recommended medications are Senna, or Senecot, and Bisacodyl, or Dulcolax, which are pills. Miralax is another treatment option. Miralax is a powder which you mix and drink. You should not take bulk-forming laxatives when you are constipated due to a narcotic. Common bulk-forming laxatives include Metamucil, Fibercon, Benefiber, or Citrusel. This class of laxative does not work when you're taking narcotics and can lead to a blockage in your intestines. If you are uncertain about which laxative to take, you can discuss this with your doctor or pharmacist. Some of the medications prescribed after surgery can be harsh on the lining of the stomach. We'll be prescribing a medication to protect your stomach. This medication works by reducing acid production. It's taken six weeks after surgery, while you're taking medications for pain and clot prevention. If you are taking a medication for stomach protection before surgery, you will be instructed how to take it after discharge. Prior to discharge from the hospital, you'll meet with a pharmacist or nurse to review your post-operative orthopedic regimen. You'll be provided with a six-week personalized medication calendar. This calendar is for the medications prescribed following your orthopedic surgery only. You should continue your previous medications as prescribed by your primary care provider, unless instructed otherwise upon discharge. Please bring this calendar with you to your first post-operative office visit with your surgeon. This calendar will guide you on the recommended times to take the medications and medications that can or cannot be taken together. The times can be adjusted based on your morning schedule as needed. The calendar will help you remember to take your medications. There are two medications prescribed for you that should not be taken together. These are the clot prevention medications and the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. These medications should be taken at least two hours apart. This will be highlighted on your personalized medication calendar. Some supplements and herbal products can affect bleeding and clotting. You should avoid using these products while you're taking the clot prevention medication. Examples of such products are listed in the Transition of Care booklet you'll receive with your medication calendar. Please review the list and withhold taking these until you have completed the treatment for clot prevention. Preventing bloodstream infections is very important following joint replacement surgery. There are three places in your body where bacteria can enter your bloodstream and travel to the artificial joint. These three places are the mouth, the urinary tract, and the skin. The bacteria that causes infections in these areas can travel through your bloodstream and go to the artificial joint. This could lead to an infection of the joint. Additionally, smoking puts you at increased risk of developing a post-operative infection as it interferes with the healing process. Tell your dentist and medical providers that you have had a joint replaced. It's the surgeon's decision if you should take an antibiotic before a dental procedure. This will be discussed with you at your first post-operative office visit. If you develop any signs of a urinary tract infection or severe skin infection, see your primary care provider immediately in case you need an antibiotic. Contact the orthopedic office if you are unsure if an antibiotic is needed prior to any procedure. Your surgeon or physician's assistant will give you instructions on when you can shower. The incision should never be scrubbed. Just let the shower water run over it. You cannot bathe or swim until your surgeon clears you to do so. Keep the surgical area clean and dry. Never apply any creams or ointments to the incision unless instructed by the surgeon. Keep pets away from the healing incision. If you develop any of the warning signs of a possible infection in the joint, you should contact your surgeon immediately. The warning signs for an infection can include a persistent fever above 100.4 degrees, shaking chills, increasing redness, tenderness, or swelling at the surgical site, increasing drainage from the wound, or increasing pain with activity or rest. The information provided in this presentation is contained in the Transition of Care booklet you'll receive prior to discharge from the hospital, as well as the following two statements. If you have any medication-related questions, please call 516-496-2644.
If you have any other issues or concerns, please reach out to your surgeon's office. Thank you for choosing Syosset Hospital's Center for Orthopedic Excellence for your joint replacement surgery and for allowing us to be part of your medical care. We wish you a successful recovery.